Let me speak a word to those that may be listening or maybe those that are here that may have been adopted. This is a curse that needs to be broken over your life if you've been adopted. Because if a child was thrown out in any sense of the word, this curse will be at work seeking to ravage them, seeking to spoil them, and seeking to keep them out of every blessing that they should be walking in. Amen? So those that have been adopted, or those that have been worked into adoption, those that have been rejected, and you know, adoption home had to pick you up. You can say a simple prayer like saying, Lord, just, just forgive me, forgive my fa fathers what they did, forgive my fathers what they did in their, in their sexual sins, and whatever they have done, and Lord, I break this curse of the bastard over my life. Amen? Oh, it's terrible. When you see unwanted people, people that nobody wants, people that nobody cares about. I mean, we wouldn't even treat animals this way sometimes, and yet we treat people that way. So, so, so that is the first area that is the most obvious of how a bastard works. And let me just say this, that if your father or your mother was a bastard or they were in turn uh, affected by any kind of a bastard curse, if they were in a line of a bastard family, what you need to do in your own life is that you need to break any soul ties that you may have that are ungodly with your father or with your mother that may have brought the curse. Because if you don't break the soul ties that you have with your parents, if they were bastards, then you will be the recipient of that bastard curse. Did you, did you hear me just now? So the first obvious way was what? Was illegitimacy. If you actually go out and fornicate, and that can affect adopted people, that can affect even married couples too. I mean, if, if, I, was, if I was a bastard, and I have children, even in wedlock, even if I get married, and if, if I was a bastard, and if I had children even in wedlock, and I had children, my children would have to break any ungodly soul ties that they may have had with me that would cause them to carry the curse that I carried with down my family line. Now, I'm not saying break any, uh, any godly soul ties that you may have with your father or mother. I'm not saying that. Okay? I'm saying break any, any avenue that the enemy may use to make you hold on to something that is not of God within them that will cause that curse now to be transferred into your family line. We want to stop it. Amen? It's got to be stopped someplace. The second area that the curse of the bastard works is here this, rejection from the womb. Rejection is a powerful, powerful instrument that the devil uses to cause the bastard curse to get to be at work. Rejection from the womb. Now it works this way. Let's say I get married and I still have kids even in wedlock. If I reject those children in any way, while they're still in the womb, if I reject them, let's say, like saying to myself, well, why did I get those children now? I just don't have enough money. I can't support them. What you just did is that you just caused the bastard curse to enter into your, into your, into your wife's womb and into the fetus of that womb. Just by saying that. Because why? Because the bastard curse is closely related to rejection. They're tied in very, very closely. That's why rejection from the womb is tied in with the bastard because rejected people are people that nobody wants and rejection works in a way that you can't enter in. Yes? Rejection operates in a way that nobody wants you to enter in and you can't enter in yourself. So the bastard curse can come in if two people get married. They're married now. They're not, they're not, they're not out of wedlock. They are legitimately married. And they decide to get married. And now they have children at an inopportune time where they didn't want them. And they say to themselves, now what are we going to do now? We have no, uh, did we have to have the child now? What you just did is that you just spoke rejection into that child. And now that child is now the recipient of a bastard curse. So now when this child begins to grow up, you find spirits of shame in there. You find spirits of rejection, spirits of shyness in there. The child can't get along with others. He's always fighting with others. And for some reason or another, you bring him through school. He doesn't get good marks in school. 
The teachers are always putting X's on him. He's always playing hooky. You're always having problems with him. So why am I having problems with this child for? Because the root of that problem was when you first spoke over that child when it was still in your wife's womb, and you said you didn't want it. Any reason? You say, well, I don't have enough money. Why'd well, I have to come at this, this time? Or maybe, maybe you could have said, maybe, well, you know, with all the sophisticated technology they got now, they know whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. And you can still, now, now there's a new way of cursing your child, even while it's still in the womb. Because if you wanted a boy the whole time, and all of a sudden, that little, uh, that little, that doctor puts that, mac, puts that uh, camera in there, and it's a girl, you say, to now why was it a girl for? Why couldn't it have been a boy? You just cursed it right there. The bastard curse immediately enters in. Rejection is a powerful tool. And if you reject anybody, especially when you reject somebody that's in the womb like that, because that, that child in the womb has got no say-so. It can't say, I don't accept nothing you're saying. It's got to receive everything you're saying, especially if it's the parents. And if you're sitting here today, just, just be reminded, and the Holy Spirit just brings it to your mind and say, you know, my parents may have said something, my parents may have done something, my parents may have argued and maybe even fighting against each other over the child even before it was even born. It could have been a bastard curse. You see? The bastard curse could also work if two people are about to get divorced. And before they get divorced, they get a child. That thing will start to work. And the child now comes out, the child now grows up, and what happens to the child? He's having problems in relationships, he can't find a job, and now he may have been raised up in a good home. He has no idea here what his parents said to him while he was still in the belly of his mother. And now he starts to grow up and his peers don't like him, and he's just, he's just like a little, you know, like a little dweeb, he's just running around. So what's the matter with this guy? Because the, the, the root of the rejection came right in there, and as you grow up, if the devil puts in one root, and he's opening up for everything else. And I'm, I'm really amazed by this. You know, I, when I first read it, I always thought, well, the bastard, it only means somebody that's birthed out of wedlock. And then the Lord started saying, uh-huh, it opens up a whole, it's a whole, it's got, it's got, it's got tentacles like you wouldn't believe. The next area, Okay, that a bastard curse can be at work is rejection in marriage. Rejection in marriage. Peer rejection. The child grows up and, he, and he's always rejected by his peers. If, even now, look at this. Even if he was not cursed from the womb, if he suffers rejection in his early teens or in his early youth and children don't want him around or children hurt him and he carries that wound inside of him now, He'll be cursed with the bastard curse. And I could see areas in my life that I had to break. And this happens, I think, to all of us. Where you grow up and your friends maybe not want you. Or your friends pick on you. Or your friends just do this. And your parents may have not even said nothing while you were in the belly of your mother. But as you were growing up, you had to be a part of the crowd. You had to smoke and take drugs and play rock and roll. Just like, otherwise you wouldn't be accepted. And if that wound of rejection gets inside of a child and causes a child to do that and not stand on its own two feet, that bastard curse will go to work. Where now the child grows up and he's 20 and 30 years old and now he can't enter into a job, he can't do this, he can't enter into a dope place. Fully grown and mature, but because why? Because the bastard curse came into him because of the rejection that was put into him by his peers and by his friends. I got one verse of scripture here about, I believe, about the, about the rejection that people suffer. God, look at this, Jeremiah chapter 30. Any kind of rejection that you carry, listen to this. Any kind of rejection, you know what rejection is? It's a wound. If you carry any rejection inside of you from your father, from your mother, from your peers, from your friends. The bastard curse has got an open place to get to work inside of you and cause you to not enter into the places where you want to go. Now look at this, Jeremiah chapter 30. Now, let me, let me hit you with one good one. You may say to yourself, this curse isn't happening to me. 
this curse is because man, I've been blessed. Any job I get, I, I, you know, I, matter of fact, I'm at the top of the executive company. You want to know something? Satan will actually cause people to enter into some things just to bind them up even more. Because Satan will give them their houses, their jobs, their homes, and everything else just to keep them out of the church. Hello. I figured I turned the, I turned the, turned the, turned the coin about but, but around. Because Satan will give you, what was the curse? That you not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Meaning, you enter into something in your life that doesn't have the anointing of God on it. And you may well indeed have your homes, your houses, your homes, your cars, your swimming pools, and everything else that you always wanted. Say, so, well, I had no problems in entering into anything. Man, I was accepted. I was, yeah, because Satan gave it all into you just for the sake of causing you to stop you from even coming to church and to enter into the presence of God. And you may indeed have everything that you wanted, but it's not anointed. It's still cursed. Wow. No, I got Oh, I'm living a good life. Yeah, but are you serving God? No. Well, then you're cursed. Then you got the curse of the bastard living on you. You can't enter into the congregation of the Lord. And Satan himself will give you all the things that you want just to keep you out of church. Isn't that nice? Just to keep you out of the place of God's presence. Just to keep you out of the place of God's word. It give you everything that you always wanted. Look what he says here. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16. And he says here in verse 16, he says, Therefore all they that, that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. Now what wounds is he talking about here? Is he talking about physical wounds? No. Because he says it right in the same verse. He says, I will heal thee of all thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they called thee an outcast. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. You see the outcast? The outcast person is a person that carries a wound. So the rejection leaves a wound in there, and that wound comes in the form of a curse. That wound comes in the form of something that causes you not to enter into where God wants you to be. You see that? The outcast. Look at this, Psalm 147. Now, I gave you three things already. How does it work? It can work from fornication, illegitimacy. That's number one. Number two, it can work from rejection from the womb. You know, even if you contemplate divorce, or even if you uh, counsel somebody to get divorced, spirits of murder and rape and abuse have got to be thrown out of you. You know that? If you just, even if you counsel somebody to get a, an abortion, you're filled with spirits of murder. Just by telling somebody, hey, that's a good idea, you better get an abortion. And you can have five children and have a happy home and say, yeah, I think you better get an abortion. You just got, got cursed with the bastard curse and you probably got, you, you, and you inherited spirits of murder, spirits of rape, and spirits of killing inside of you to go with it as well. It's nice, isn't it? What did I say? Psalm 147. Verse 1. You see, what, why is this curse... So, so powerful that we need to hate it for. Why? Because it's tied in with rejection and because of this, there's something inside of us that wants to be accepted. There's something inside of every human being that wants to be accepted for what they do. They want to be accepted as people. They want to be received as people. They want to be respected as people. It's inside of them. We want to be accepted. You know why? Because when God made man, He made man in love. God is love, therefore everything He makes, He makes with love and in love. And because He's made us with the ability of love, we want love and we want to give love and we want to receive love. That's what life is all about. That's why people get married for it and live in homes for it, because of love. Because of the nature that man has to want to give love and receive it. 
And when we're stopped in any way of giving and receiving love, it's because there's a bastard curse that's at work, maybe a bastard curse that's at work, that's causing us not to enter into that love that God wants us to give and receive. Now look at this, Psalm 147. You know, think of this for a minute. Stay with me, Jennifer. Think of this. God built His kingdom on love. Satan built His kingdom on rejection. God builds His kingdom on accepting you, taking you, receiving you, saving you. The devil builds His kingdom on throwing you out, abusing you, kicking you all around, letting you go through hard times. That's how His kingdom is built on. Rejection. Psalm 147, look at this please. And look at verse 1, it says, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praises comely. The Lord thus built up Jerusalem. He gathered together the outcasts of Israel. Now this is what we need to be doing in the church, gathering in all the outcasts. Gathering in all the people that nobody else wants. Gathering in all the people that nobody else cares for. This is what the church is about. We gather in the outcasts. The, 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 the fourth way in which the bastard curse can work is through abuse. You hear me? Abuse. If you've been a victim of abuse, such as rape, if you've been raped, or something happened to you, physical abuse, sexual abuse, if you were molested or sexually abused by your parents, or by an uncle, or by a relative, the bastard curse can enter in right into, into you and cause you to not enter into where you should be. Do you hear that? Look at me. You call your child stupid, ignorant, idiot, fool. Those are like wounds that get into a child. That are like wounds that even get into grown up adults. And those verbal abuses cause the whole, the, the whole curse to start to go into motion. Because now you receive the wound, you call me stupid, you call me not accepted, and everything else. And now I receive that wound, and what does that wound do? The wound makes a, causes a curse to go into operation, where, that whatever I try to do now, I'm not accepted. I'm not received. I can't get ahead of myself because of the words that were spoken into me that were abusive, so abusive to me, that now I can't get beyond myself, and it stops me from entering into life's blessings. And isn't it something, all the words that we say to each other, oh, you idiot, oh, ha, ha, we just laugh over it. And we don't realize the wounds, especially young people and young children, and you start saying things to people. And those verbal abuses, physical abuses, sexual abuses, any kind of abuse at all where you're being rejected or you're being verbally attacked, the bastard curse can come in, and it leaves a wound there. You see, that's the, that's, that's the problem of it. If you were mugged, the jumped, you hear that? And now the fear comes over you, that leaves a wound there. That now you can't get beyond yourself. You can't get out of yourself. You can't enter into it. You see that? And we, that's why the Lord, I believe, holds us responsible for how we treat one another. He holds us responsible for how we treat one another. He holds us responsible for how we act towards one another. Because the most delicate thing that God has made is the human heart. And it can break with one word. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but names will never hurt me. That's the biggest lie of the devil. Matter of fact, I think I'd rather get hit with sticks and stones than be hearing some of the words that come out of people's mouths. The sticks and stones, I get healed very quickly, but those words that people say leave a mark and an impression there. The Lord, recently, I want to just put this on tape. I had a minister, you get, sometimes you get, I, I, I was having a, a vault with a minister, but the minister just didn't want me around, saying things to me and whatever. And I was saying, Lord, why, why is this particular minister saying things to me, just trying to crush my spirit. And man, I got angry. 
I said, how dare this man try to crush my spirit and try to crush my ministry and try to say things to me that are injurious to the work that I want to do for the Lord. And the Lord shut me up and stopped me right there and brought me back to what happened to this minister they were when he was a child, that they actually took the baby and they found him in a garbage can. They were going to flush him down a toilet bowl. And God says, the reason why that happened for, the reason why, and the reason why, the Lord opened that up to me, the reason why we reject others for, is because we've suffered horrendous rejection. And that rejection stays inside of us so long, that now we carry the curse of the bastard within us, and we will not allow others to enter into where we should be. That's what God showed me. He says, they, He can't let you enter in, because he was not able to enter in. That curse and that wound is still there. And he said, so the Lord said, you break it, the curse and break it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a curse that's at work. That causes people to reject. If we, listen, if they reject the anointing that's on your life, it's not your fault. They're the ones that, have, that are carrying the curse, not you. If they call you crazy for believing in deliverance or call you crazy for receiving the word of God or call you crazy for anything else, it's not, it's not your fault. It's because they can't enter into the anointing. You hear that? Can't enter into the congregation of the Lord. They can't enter into what God is saying. Why? Because someplace, somewhere in their own lives, one way or another, that wound got in there and it stopped them from entering in. Did you hear me? It, that, that, this curse is so bad, it will actually cause you to reject the anointing. Throw the anointing out and spurn the anointing on somebody else's life. Because, if, hey, if you're anointed, I want to enter into what God has given to you. It is a, it is a simple de you know, deduction. Hey, if you got something from God, I want to enter into it. If you got a word from God, I want to enter into it. If you got an anointing from God, I want to enter into it. But you see, if you don't allow yourself, if you don't allow others to enter into the anointing that you have, and if others spurn the anointing that is on your life and do not enter into the anointing that you've got, it's because that this, it could very well be that this bastard curse is at work seeking to prevent those from entering into the blessing and to the presence of God. Now here's one other way that the curse works. Get a load of this. This is for all of us. Turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Remember what I said to you earlier? I said, well, you just did Old Testament thing and don't give me the law. It's found in the New Testament and let's read it. And the bastard curse can go into operation as we see here in Hebrews chapter, uh, no, Hebrews chapter 13. No, Hebrews chapter 12, excuse me. You know, some people are actually scared of commitments. We're scared of it. Oh, what's it going to take out of my life? What is it going to mean for me to give up that night? What is it going to mean to... And we're, if we're scared of a commitment, it could very well be because this curse is at work. Causing us not to enter in. Because when God says to commit yourself, when God gives you something, I mean, think of how stupid it is, really. God gives us something and now we're scared to get into it. We're scared to give ourselves to it. Because it's going to rob us of our little precious time or whatever. And we're scared to do what God is telling us to do because we're, we're just fearful. What would cause that thing? I would have to be suspicious. There's, there's a basic curse that's at work that's preventing me from entering into what God wants to give to me. People of God, never be as scared what God wants to give to you. Enter into it fully. Because God will never rob you or deplete you of anything. Amen. Now look at this. this. This is for all of us here. Look at what he says here in Hebrews chapter 12. Praise the name of the Lord. I just, I just feel God is doing something here this morning with this thing. And I believe that many of us are going to start entering into things that we've been praying about and breakthroughs are going to start to come because God wants to remove this, this horrible curse that could be at work. And you think, well, uh, well, I wasn't born out of illegitimacy. I didn't, bo never married somebody that was illegitimate. I got none. But yet, look at all the other ways this thing could be at work. And you see, we could be bastards if we, again, if we don't allow, if we cannot enter in and cause others to enter into what we have. 
It's a bastard curse. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, we, are, we are bastards. Look what he says here in Hebrews chapter 12. So, so tremendous is the impact of this. Look at what he says here in Hebrews chapter 12. He says in verse 7, he says, For if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers. That means that everybody's going to get chastised one way or another. Everybody's going to get corrected. Everybody's going to get it. <laughs> you hear that? If God loves you, He's going to convict you. If God loves you, He's going to speak with you. If God loves you, He's going to deal with you. If God loves you, He's not going to cause you to act like the rest of everybody else's acts and gets away with it. Look what he says here. If you be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. I mean, it explains, explains it out right there. And he says that you can come under a bastard curse if you do not allow the Lord to deal with you. If you will not allow the Lord to speak to you, if you will not allow the Lord to correct you, if you do not allow the Lord to impart anything to you, God says you're not a true son, but rather you're a bastard son. You're illegitimate. You're, you're birthing something in your life that has not come from my spirit. And how many things do we birth in our lives that do not come from the spirit of God? Those things that we have produced in our lives that God never had his hand on is considered to be of a bastard. And let me, just, let me just give you the word right here, how we can, we can enter into the bastard curse right now if we want to, just right after the service. You know how you get it? I mean, we're trying to enter into things, but you can enter into this curse. How? How? One way. Disobey God. When you, we are disobedient, and don't want to listen to what God says. Matter of fact, oh, Lord, I listen to you, but when the pastor says something, get out of here, the pastor's out of his mind. Nuts. I don't listen to him. I'll go to some other church. Guess what? You just, you're just walking around with this. You're, you're, you're just fooling yourself because you're just walking around. The New Testament says it. You're clearly a bastard. You're clearly walking around with things in your life that you're not going to be able, you're going to find yourself being blocked and you're not going to be able to enter into things. And what is it with people today? Look at all over the church today. Disobedience and people are not enter, able to enter into truth. They can't enter into rest. They can't enter into peace. They can't enter into the anointing. They can't enter into revelation knowledge. They can't enter into healing. They can't enter into worship. They can't enter into the praises of God. They can't. Why? Because they're bastards. And the reason why they're bastards for is because someplace along the line, they were disobedient and they never sought forgiveness for the disobedience. That somewhere along the line, God was trying to deal with them about something, and they just said, no, 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 I'm not listening, I'm plugging up my ears, no God, ha, 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 ha. And guess what? We get cursed with this thing, and then we want to enter into something. We want to enter into grace. We want to enter into goodness. We want God to bless, and then the Lord said, well, this curse is at work, we've got to break it first. He says, you're bastards and you're not sons. Now, we've got to ask yourself the question, what would cause us to disobey? Because many times, and listen to me, many times we will be disobedient because of how we've been treated. It may not necessarily be a pure act of rebellion on your part as to the reason why you disobeyed. You could very well disobey because somebody else has just given you a hard time and you just said, forget about this man, I'm not putting up with this anymore, get me out of here. And you know what God said to Ezekiel? Ezekiel had one of the worst ministries ever. I would never want to be in. A, I would never have to ha want Ezekiel's ministry. Because God said to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, I am sending you to a rebellious people. How'd you like that, huh? How'd you like God? I mean, I never heard God say a prophecy to somebody and say, Yeah, you got a great ministry. I'm sending you a bunch of rebellious people. They're gonna hate your guts. <laughs> They're going to think you're crazy. They're going to go off the wall. You're going to have more problems with the people than anything else. I'm sending you to a rebellious house. That's what he told Ezekiel. But you know what else he told Ezekiel? He says, let me give you a word of advice, Ezekiel. He says, don't let their rebellion cause you to be rebellious. Amen. Don't let their rebellion rub off on you and you rebel against their rebellion. You see, it's easy when you mistreat me that I rebel against what you're doing to me. 
but God says don't rebel against it because it's all of me, don't disobey, but put yourself under the chastisement of God and do not be a bastard, but be a pure son. Amen. Wow. You see, if you hurt me and want to wound me with rejection, it's very easy for me to rebel against that. And while I'm rebelling against it, I don't realize it, but as a, as a Christian, as a son of God, God wants to use that to chastise me, to bring me under the chastisement of God. This way I will be matured as a matured son. But if I rebel against what you've done to me, if I stop picking on you and stop blaming you and start rebelling against you for what you did to me, then guess what? I'll be walking around with this bastard curse because I will not be able to qualify as a true son. Because you know what a bastard is? It's somebody that does not, cannot stand under the test. So if you bother me, if you say something to me, if you hurt me, and now I rebel because of what you've done, I'm only fooling myself. I'm putting myself under a, under a curse, and I'm not allowing God to deal with me on the issue. This way I can hear God. And what I've done is I just walked in disobedience, and I'm walking in the disobedience, I've just brought myself under that curse. I mean, God clearly showed this, this thing to me happening even in the homes where the parents can't listen to the child, the child can't listen to the parents. How does a bat... I'm talking about New Testament bastards now. How are they produced? Well, the Old Testament bastard is produced out of an illegitimate relationship. You decide to go and fornicate with somebody and the bastard is conceived. Well, the same thing can have relevance to now uh, us being as sons of God, walking in the Spirit of God. We can fornicate with other spirits that are not of God. Hello? We can go into spiritual adultery and spiritual fornication with spirits that are not coming from God, and we can take heed to those spirits, enter into a relationship with those spirits, and then produce something in our lives that God considers to be illegitimate. Because we were not listening to God. Amen. Hello. Strong, isn't it? Yeah. But it's the truth. I mean, you know, if we're, not, if we're doing things that God is not telling us to do, and if we're now taking heed to spirits of doubt, spirits of bitterness, I mean, some of us like to listen to those spirits, one in the spirit of God. We like to hear from the spirit of revenge, the spirit of envy. How about gossip? Oh, man, that, that really feeds off a real well. And we give our ears to it, and now we're listening to other things. And what happens? We're entering into spiritual fornication with that spirit. And we like to hear the gossip. We like to hear the envy. We like to hear the rumors. We like to hear what Pastor so-and-so did that made him fall. We like to hear about, oh man, and we never realizing it that we're entering into a relationship with a demonic spirit or with another thing, another thing that is not of God. And what does it do? It conceives something inside of us that is illegitimate. I'll give you one example, strong example. A girl comes home one day and says, I fell in love with a beautiful man. Now, the, man, now the, the father is not listening to God. He's been raised in a strong, you know, uh, cultural background, and, and he's a stern, you know, father or whatever, and he, you know, he lays all the rules down. He's a good father, but he lays all the rules down and everything else. And, he, and for some reason or another, he, with all that sternness and that military activity going on inside of his head, he doesn't have the ability really to listen to when God is talking. So what happens? His the beautiful daughter comes home one day and says, I met a beautiful man. He's well-educated. He goes to church. Matter of fact, he's going to be in the ministry. And uh, he's, studying to, he's, got, he's got studying to even be a doctor. And he's just, you know, a beautiful man. And the, uh, the father says, oh, that's nice. Who is he? And the, the girl says, oh, he's a black man. And the minute the father hears that the man, the man is black, he closes his ears to everything else. And now all he hears is those old spirits that are spirits of prejudice, spirits of hatred, spirits of shame. Oh, wow, I'm, 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 my, my, my daughter's going to marry a black... What will everybody else say? And he, oh, he's listened to all these things. And now he's conceived the bastard curse right in the home because he's not listening to God. And it can happen the same way with the child. The parent can say something to the child and the parent is speaking to the child. Can't you listen to me? No, I can't listen. The generation gap is the results of a bastard curse. And now the parent is starting to speak to the child. The child doesn't want to listen. Why? Because that child ain't listening to God because somehow, somewhere, there's a bastard curse that's at work that needs to be broken. Now, I'm not saying that in every situation. 
But it could very well be that this thing could be at work. Where now the, per the child now moves out of rejection that's inside of him. And that's the reason why he can't hear God. The child moves out of rejection that's there. And instead of listening to the counsel and the wisdom of God, there's another spirit inside him that's at work that he's listening to, that he's taking heed to, that will not accept the counsel of his father or of his mother. And now the bastard curse is right in the home. Because the father, the, the child is not, a what? What did I say? Enter in, enter in, enter. The child can't enter into the counsel of the father. The child can't enter into the wisdom of the mother. The child can't enter into the obedience of what they can't enter into it. Likewise with the parents. The parents can't enter into what their child is supposed to be. Can't enter into it. I won't accept it. It could very well be that this curse of the bastards may be at work in many homes, in many places. And most likely you'll know that it's working inside of a child if a child somehow is carrying a deep wound of rejection. That child is walking around with some kind of rejection inside of him. He's opened the door for that bastard curse to now start to spread. So he can't enter into the counsel of his father. And this, I believe, is a strong tool, amen? That we can use and that we can come against the devil with and we can come against things in our lives with so that we will not cause the enemy to rob us of things that we should be entering into. And I believe God wants us to enter in just very quickly. Read just something, what happened to David. Look what happened to David. Speaking about the ancestral curses of the sin, what happened to David? He decided to go to bed one night with Bathsheba. Look at the household results in the household of David, right? Household results in the household of David because he birthed a bastard child out of Bathsheba, which God took. You wonder why God took that child for? That he birthed it in that illicit affair that he had with Bathsheba? Because it was a bastard child. That's why. Let's take a look at some of the household results of all this. Murder. There was murder in his home. There was incest in his home. There was rebellion in the home. I mean, if we start to see these things at work, we should very well start breaking it. And again, it may not be that it's not even there at all. Maybe the, the, the rejection or the thing is not there and it could be something else. But I would be very, very suspicious of it now that I'm, now that I'm on with this truth. Listen to this. Amnon, David's firstborn, raped his half-sister, Tamar. Absalom kills Amnon. Tamar remains destitute. Absalom takes David's wives and rebels against David. All because of that one act that was committed that caused a bastard curse to enter in. This is what David was laboring under the whole time, was a bastard curse. So are we going to break it this morning? Stand to your feet this morning. Let's say a prayer, renunciation. And I pray this has helped you tonight. I pray this will do something to you and for you. Now leave that thing on. I want them to hear the, hear the prayer too. Because this prayer, I believe, will help you out in breaking any bastard curses that may be at work over your life. Amen? We want to break them today. I used that testimony of my wife and I saw some dramatic results. We saw some tremendous results. And I believe that that bastard curse is tied in with the weight and everything else. It's all going to go. Because I, I know where, where it's lying in. You see, when you got the answer and you see where it's going for, when you see the devil as a devil, you go after the devil. Amen. You don't play with the devil. You go after it. You call it out for what it is. A lot, of people like, a lot of people like to play games with the devil. You know how they do? Well, don't, talk, don't tell others about my personal affairs. Hey, it isn't my personal affair. It's the devil's affair that I want to expose and I want to get delivered of. <laughs> people, got their, the, people got things confused. Uh, don't call the spirit out in the church because somebody else may hear it. And, you know, it's really embarrassing to know that you're calling that spirit out of me. Oh, no, it's not. People walking around saying, I got... I got diabetes. I got cancer. No, I don't got it. The devil has got it. Why are you confessing that you got it for? It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the devil. Amen. I got a flu. Oh, my cold got better. What are you saying it's your cold for? It's the devil's cold, not yours. Amen. 
Let's say this prayer of renunciation together. Amen. And I, pr I believe that this prayer will help us to ferret out and to break some of these curses. He said, so say this prayer with me. Say, Father, Father, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bring every, I bring every sin of my forefather for 400 years up to you. I ask you to forgive their sins and forgive the sin of bearing illegitimate children that is in my family line for over 500 years. I ask you to forgive the sin of my forefather and to forgive any of my sins that has displeased you or if there has been anyone that has hated you and are bearing this iniquity I ask you to forgive them also. Lord, I ask you to remove any rejection that may be inside of me that others may have placed within me that I am carrying around that I am walking around with that is causing this bastard curse to work in my life. I remove the rejection right now. I curse it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I break all the soul ties that I may have been holding on to from my father, from my mother, from my ancestors, or anyone else that has been in my family line that has carried a bastard curse. I break the soul tie right now. And I ask you, Lord, to remove the rejection out of my heart, out of my spirit that I am carrying that that other person placed within me that is causing me to carry to bastard curse. I break it right now in Jesus' name. I know, Lord, that your word says that we bear the sins and the iniquities of our forefathers. And even though I am not illegitimate and have not committed any sexual sins, I ask you, Lord, to cleanse my bloodline and anything in my family line that I may have inherited from my forefathers. I ask you, Jesus, to come with your precious blood, with your mighty hand, and cleanse me and wash me of the curse of the bastard. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I clean out or oh, clean out and send your angels and remove all the old debris that is inside of me that I know nothing about that hinders me that stops me from entering in that stops me from growing as a Christian in Jesus name Lord let your precious anointing come upon me heal and cleanse me by your precious blood by your stripes I am healed now Lord for all the feelings of rejection of not being able to love people of not being able to enter into God's blessings of not letting others enter into my blessings I ask you Lord to remove it now and to help me and I ask that this curse of the bastards be lifted off of me Lord I hate the enemy I hate his curse that's making me feel like I'm taking my life I break the curses of suicide that have come in as a result of the bastards. I break the curse of, 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 those, of, this, of this spirit making me feel rejected all the time, causing this sick feeling in my stomach. Lord, your word says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. Lord, I have called upon you and I ask you to deliver me from these spirits that are connected with the curse of the bastard. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord.